return to your scheduled programming shortly, or we are currently experiencing technical difficulty. I know, I know, there was an echo there. Sorry about that. That was my fault. I was just messed up the settings, and I didn't even turn the light on. I'm an idiot. It's been a day, I tell you. So, how are you guys doing? Quantum Leaper, haven't seen you in a while. Good to see you, my friend. Um, and uh, Schromer is, for some reason, advocating for Mr. Miles. I, I'm, I'm not sure what's going on there. Uh, Schromer, are you okay? I mean, take any sudden blows to the head or anything? Um, so Quantum saying that his chat says he was first, so he's going to take some comfort out of that. And that's... Well, in, you're a quantum leaper, so in your quantum universe, you were first. And of course, in the mirror universe, Marlena Moreau was, here, was first. And so, you see, so Josh, Quantum, and Marlena were all first in their very own special way, I guess. Um, Dr. Alex is here. Uh, apparently relatively sober. Good to see you, Doctor. <laughs> says, made it before the credits ended. Yay. Good to see you. Um, Quantum says, oh, got a job. Well, good. Uh, that's, I, mean, I assume that's a good thing. I mean, so awesome. Uh, is back still bothering me? Yeah, not as bad as it was yesterday. Uh, but yeah, um, like I said, it comes with the territory being old and trying to do any kind of physical things around the house every time i keep thinking oh i'll be okay this time and then i'm uh, yeah um mr miles says the people have spoken they want me wrenched i will remember that mr miles and so just for you hold on here here you go and uh, there we go There, so uh, that should make you happy there, Mr. Miles. Um, so, uh, several blows me, I am not, several blows me not infected at all. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think you are. Uh, yeah, the camera was a little off. Thank you, Mr. Miles, for that. Um, uh, I have to go to bed before half of the live chat so I can get up at 5 a.m. Ah, that sucks. I know how that feels, man. I, well, you know, because I should go to bed before the live streams most of the time, but I, I don't because I'm hosting them. Everybody is first and gets a ribbon. Sorry, Alex, this is not the UK where everybody gets a ribbon. Of course, here in the United States, most places everybody gets a ribbon, but not on this show. Nope. Dang it. Absolutely not. Um, and I thought you lost that vid. No, the one that I, I can't recover is the original Infinity Gauntlet one. That one is gone forever. That one, uh, however, Mr. Miles uh, petitioned to, uh, and, and Bird of Prey and a couple others petitioned to get rid of it, which I did. But Mr. Miles, uh, since it makes him hate feel the hate so much, whenever he asks for a wrench, I, I just put that up there for him. Um, as a Lord of the Sith, I must warn you to never give Mr. Miles a... Oh, yeah, yeah, don't worry. He's, he's not getting one. Um, so, uh, how an outtake true shot but true shot is not clean? I'm not sure what you mean there, Captain Jesse. Uh, maybe I'm misunderstanding. It says, how a out take true shot but true shot is not clean or is it yeah i'm missing something uh, marlena finally saw mr plinkett's review the last jedi every almost everything mr plinkett does is awesome it's just they don't do enough stuff with mr plinkett over at red letter media why are you eating taco cats in tacos are you alf no uh, this is not a this is not a food product this is a pet um Today on the Anti Trekker, the Anti Trekker grumbles angrily about his lost years and aching back. How is the back today? Well, it is aching, and I am old. Thank you, Darren. <laughs> and Thomas throws a buck ninety nine into the chat and says, "I don't want to live on this planet anymore." Now, Thomas, Thomas, first of all, this planet is better with you. Second of all, 
I don't want to live here either, but unfortunately, it's the only planet you can currently live on. Oh, no, no, please, I, mm -hmm. I don't want to go, I don't want to go, please, mm -hmm. no, I don't want to go, no. Mm -hmm. Why would you do this to your mm -hmm. fans, you heartless monster? What and that's, uh, uh, Ian is in the house, says hi, how you doing, Ian? Um, always good to see you, my friend. As is James is in the house. Uh, Thomas just got the notification. Well, we've only been going for a couple of minutes, Thomas. You didn't really miss much, just the, the general intros and saying hi. Uh, dang it, do you have a spittoon? I do not. Why do you ask? Uh, Mr. Miles says the last time I wrenched me, it broke you too. That's absolutely true, it did. Uh, sent you a picture on Discord of Shatner Christmas. Oh, is the, is the album out? Um, because that is awesome. If it is, I plan on getting that album. Yeah, the Shatner Claus. Is that? Yeah, it's still in pre-order. So expected October 26th. So about a month from now. Uh, yes, I, I'm definitely getting that album. Um, so, uh, what do you mean with Stage 9? Yeah, that's the other thing I was going to ask. What, Captain, what did you mean? What happened to Stage 9 Studios? I did not hear anything about that, but I've been working all morning. Um, good news! We don't live on a planet. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Sadly, any planet idiots can live, idiots will thrive. Yeah, thank you, Iron Wolf, for ruining my day. Mary is in the house. Good to see you, Mary. I hope that you are having a decent day. I know that every day is a struggle for you sometimes. But I hope that this is this one is less of a struggle than the last one. Um, seems odd that your son would crush himself. Yeah, he, he, yeah, I know. <laughs> he's, he's a weird kid, but I love him. Um, it's making pretty crappy when totally non-profit making and no money dedicated fan-made emulation get told to stop. Like CBS only wants crappy butt wipe money. Well, yeah, CBS is uh, yeah. CBS is CBS. Uh, Tom says it's a pre-order. You can get the first song now. Oh, well, I didn't know. I might have to do that on payday then. <laughs> Am I printing a gold bar? I wish. If I could print a gold bar, I certainly would. No, I'm printing... This is, this is the low-quality draft that I did, and I finally think I got most of the settings right, so I will uh, show you guys the Anti-Trekker ship plaque. This is a, like I said, a low quality draft that I did to see if I had all the settings right. But you can see you can actually read all the text this time. And so uh, what's printing now is a higher quality version of it. Um, no way CBS hit them uh, as well. Are you serious? Um, CBS will hit just about anybody. Uh, Mary says she's having a better day today. That is very good, my friend. I'm glad to hear that. Um... Love their reaction to the 1701D. Uh, which, whose reaction? I'm, I'm, I must have missed something in there. Uh, well, hello everyone. Good to see you all. Good to see you, Admiral. How are things up in the fake world of Canada? Or as many here in the United States call it, Canadia. Um, stage 9 has been given a cease and desist. Oh, okay. Yeah. do Look, are you really surprised by this, anybody? I mean, we're talking CBS here. CBS, uh, I mean, it's literally their company motto, we will be a-holes. I, I think that is actually their, their company motto. Um, just in time for my drive home. I hope everyone is having a great day. Well, I'm glad I was able to help you. Hey, Anti-Ryan Johnson, how's it going on that drive? Just so you know, on the 405 South right now, there is a three-car pileup, so watch out for that. However, on 99 East, everything looks good, so a good detour there. Oh, watch out for that meteor. It's going to take out your immediate vicinity and vaporize everyone with about three miles. Hey, now sports. All right. Uh, so... <laughs> Uh, and actually, I'll tell you, my, my schedule is going to be changing here in um, in a few weeks. So I have to figure out what I'm going to do with the live streams because uh, I got used to this schedule because this schedule I work right now is a split shift. So I work the first half of the day, then I'm off for five hours, and I work the second half of the day, and then I'm off for the night. 
And what I've been doing is alternating between doing my live streams during the split, like today, or after the second half. However, my shift as of October 21st, I believe, so just under a month from now, um, my schedule is going to not be a split shift anymore. And so I have to figure out what I'm going to do as far as the live streams. I'll still be getting off at about, actually about 15 minutes later than I'm currently getting off. Instead of, like currently I'm off at 10 central, I live in the central time zone, and I'll be getting off at like 10.15. So that's relatively close for the late night streams. But I can't do the afternoon streams because I'll be working, and I could do a morning stream. Uh, so I'm trying, to, because I don't have to work until like... Um, one o'clock in the afternoon so i'll i'm thinking about either doing a mor morning stream or just do afternoon streams on my days off or just doing night streams so i need some advice on that guys doesn't cbs stand for can be sued no because cbs can't be sued cbs will sue you um those crabby buggers should concentrate on shows like discovery and not destroy the products of fans that spend their blood and tears uh to create so awesome things. I agree to a point. Uh, here's the problem with all that um, is that when uh, the, 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 is that CBS does legally own the IP of Trek. And so, for example, if I were to produce a fan made Star Trek series and it got, and it was earning money because it was so incredibly popular, it was so incredibly awesome because I'm such an awesome writer and we got some great YouTubers to do the visual effects and stuff like that. And let's say we started putting a series out there and started actually making money. CBS could legitimately say that we are violating their copyright. However, what is protected is commentary and criticism. So they absolutely can't, legally, they can't touch like what I do because I don't actually produce a fan-made version of their product. Um, but it's a fine line between fan film and, and, and the frustrating thing is, is that the fan films right now are better than the actual product. And I think that's why CBS is getting so sue happy right now. What time do I start work on October 24th? I believe, I, I, if I remember correctly, I think it's 1.15 to 10... Well, wait a minute. Oh, maybe I'll have to double check. It might be 2.15 to 10... I'm, I'm going to have to check. It's, it's either like 2.15 to 10.15 or 1.15 to 9.15, something like that. Um, and so it's early afternoon to evening. And so I will... And it's a total of nine hours because there's a one-hour lunch in there. And so how I do it with the, uh, with the live streams, it's going to depend on, honestly, probably when you guys are willing to watch the show. So if I do day, morning live streams and nobody watches, then I'll just stick with night live streams, except maybe on my days off. Uh, if you do a morning stream for your EU fans, we don't want to lose you. See, that's the thing is that I know I got a lot of people on the, on the uh, especially, particularly Ireland. I don't know what it is about you Irish, but you guys seem to love me for some reason. And maybe it's because I drink at night. I don't know. Um, but you guys aren't here for my night stream. So how does that make any sense? So the... Um, anyway, the... What was I going to say? I don't remember what I was going to say now. Because I completely lost my... Oh, yeah. So I'm... Yeah, but I don't want to... So I do want to have some content for you guys. And I'm probably going to... Yeah, I'm going to have to figure something out. Tell your boss that you want to make your own schedule. Yeah, that's going to happen. And Jay says, tell us about the new trailer. Are you talking about the picture that I showed last night? Um, for those of you that haven't seen it, and it's actually in very small, uh, next to the printer, you can see it there, but I'll bring up the large version of it here. Give me just a second. Let me bring it uh, up on Discord. So I'm working on, and it's going to take a while to get this done. It's probably going to be on the order of a couple of months before I actually have it ready to go. But this is my first test image for an upcoming uh, series of videos, basically side-by-side in detail, in depth comparison of the Constitution class Federation starship versus an Imperial Star Destroyer circa 1977. And so I figured 
if we're going to do a matchup, let's do the original Enterprise versus the original badass from Star Wars. So, um, I and and I think that this image came out really good. However, one problem I'm running into is that uh, I made this in a program called Blender, which is a great 3D program. And I can do all the animation stuff I want to, but I am, unfortunately, my computer is many years old now, and so to render it at the kind of quality you see in this image right here would probably take weeks. And during those weeks, I couldn't do anything else on the computer. And so I may have to actually hold off on the actual animations until I can afford to replace the computer. Just, just being real about it. I'll probably still do the video with still images because I really am excited about the, the concept. But uh, it, may, uh, it may be a little bit before I can actually do an animated version, which is what I really want to do. And, 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 you know, one thing that inspired me are channels like Resurrected Starships and some of the stuff that he's done. Um, so I would love a wallpaper beauty shot of a Constitution glass with my old submarine's name on it instead. That'd be kind of cool, yeah. Um, and I could definitely see that. I, I, and you should be able to do that. And you, you do realize Blender is free, which is nice. Bird of Prey throws a fiver into the chat, says, just live stream while you work. We won't care. Occasionally check over and play a super chat when we're talking about confidential information. Yeah, that would go over real well, Bird of Prey. <laughs> all, all it would take is one day that I forgot to hit the mute button and it's... You're fired. So I, I can't take that chance because even though I would rather be doing YouTube full time, that job pays the bills right now. Uh, YouTube supplements that job. That job does not supplement YouTube. Um, and uh, Derek says, should be fine, Mary. She was on the phone earlier. We're going to church tomorrow. I uh, Oh, I must, missed something. Oh, sent your mom a card. Okay. Um, so, uh, and it's uh, Andy Checker, if you steal from the thir 3D printer funds, you could get an i9. Uh, I don't quite have enough to get an i9. I mean, I might be able to buy the processor, but I wouldn't be able to put a whole system together for 800 bucks. Um, and I, and I, and I honestly, I'm not going to steal from the 3D printer fund, at least not yet, not unless I get to a point because, uh, I, I, I'm tr I'm scraping everything I can together because I'm working a little bit of overtime at work when I can. Uh, I also have uh, the funds for my patron supporters that's rolling into that. And, and hopefully I'll be able to get things moving here in the not too distant future. Um, um, Ian says, by the way, love the concept. Only issue is that the original Connie isn't as scientifically advanced as far as tactics as, say, the Galaxy class. That's part of the reason that i'm using the constitution it is not as you're right it's not as advanced as the galaxy class uh sorry i missed your comment there mr miles let me go back and say uh anti i'm just wanting to brag but october 1st i'm celebrating my three-year anniversary of quitting cigarettes awesome mr miles i am actually proud of you for that i i did miss the comment i'm sorry i didn't skip it i just it slipped past me um resurrected's video on balance of terror was fantastic absolutely uh, and like I said, he's kind of gotten me inspired to, to, because I used to do a lot of 3d stuff back in the day and I love that kind of thing, but unfortunately the software has changed and my computer has not. So I need to catch up with the times, but that's something I'd like to start infusing into my videos a little bit is if I do a breakdown of why I think a tactic is stupid to actually be able to show it on the screen. Um, if you do a morning stream that's like 4 p.m. Irish time, your night streams are far too late uh, in the a.m., like 5 a.m. or even 4 a.m. So what time is it for you right now, Darth? Because I get your time zone so confused. Um, let's see. Uh, notification was late for John. I'm sorry about that, John. Um, and Mary, yeah, you're, Mary's at six years of no alcohol, so we got we got some good quitters in here, and that is awesome. That is absolutely awesome. I want to completely encourage you uh, to any of that. So it's it's ten eighteen right now. So four p.m. would have been six hours ago. Yeah, I could probably do something like that, uh, and so I, I may do that. Uh, Admiral Brocode, 
with 10 fake Canadian dollars says, loved your last video. It uh, it's shows when Star Trek was truly at its best when Seven of Nine's boobs entered the universe. <laughs> Hashtag Trek cosplay. <laughs> oh, nice. And of course, Admiral, you can pick any of the Super Chat rewards or Mega Chat or uh, Uber Chat rewards as you see fit. Trek Yards! is in the house i presume that is the mighty captain foley and just so you guys know uh captain foley when he comes into the house well you know he really likes to mess with us all because this is the voice of captain foley oh i've done far worse than kill you anti-trekker i've hurt you and i wish to go on hurting you I shall leave you as you left me, as you left the commander, marooned for all eternity in the center of a dead YouTube channel, buried in comments, buried in comments. <laughs> <laughs> so Captain can't stay long, but good to see you anytime you happen to be in the neighborhood, my friend. Um, and so Admiral has decided that for the captain, he wants to give him a little bit of love of lore. I may have a sh It's not clean. Repeat, I do not have a clean sh Take the bloody sh Oh yeah, here it comes. Alright, Captain Foley. Look deeply into the screen and see him. of ecstasy on Laura's face. Oh, some things you just can't unsee. So that was a little dedication just for you, Captain Foley. Just for you, from your fellow Canadian, Admiral Brocode. And Sovereign506 throws 15 of his evil Imperial dollars in there. Thank you so much. It's great show, Anti-Checker, even if they're on very late for us poor Europeans. Well, that may change here in the not in uh, in October, since my schedule is going to be shifting. I'm going to probably be doing some earlier live streams. So since it seems like the general consensus is that would be a good thing. And I'm glad, because I do, I do know I have a lot of European um, fans, and I'm... If I can spend a little bit more, you know, if I do a European show in the morning and then a uh, America show at night, uh, alternating days, I think that'll be awesome. But he wants number four for the French because oh, who doesn't want the French to be happy? Well, who cares? <laughs> What is this? 
A female of the skunk persuasion. She is so stunning, I must... Hey, hey, what are you doing? Stop objectifying that cat. Uh, what is this? She is le cat? Oh, I'm so sorry. I did not know I... Oh, what, what? Because she's a cat, she's not good enough for you? No, 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 no. But we are not even the same species, so... Oh, so now you're cat shaming. No, no. I am just... Get him! Get him! <laughs> Oh, so objectifying women and cat shaming is not bad enough? Now you have to make fun of the disabled? Jeez. <laughs> Viva la France. Yeah, I don't know where Luke is. I saw him the other day, but he's unfortunately not here right now. Uh, Mr. Miles says, why would you do this to your guests? Hey, I don't do it. You guys do. I can't, I can't control that. And Trackyards, uh, Captain Foley says he's seen this way too often. I don't know, Captain. I think you kind of like it. I, I, I really do. Uh, how much does the bleach companies pay you to make shirtless dancing lore? Um, unfortunately, not quite enough to retire, but getting there. Um, does lore behave this way after your discussion? <laughs> lore behaves this way all the time. Um... I've never said you've never joined one of my live videos, Anti Trucker. Well, usually, honestly, uh, Captain, uh, the only reason for that is generally when you're doing a live stream, I'm usually working. Um, I have my schedule is kind of a weird one, uh, so I, I'm in the Central Time Zone and I work from like 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. and then from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. and so and then so in that window in between, I'm usually hanging out with Mrs. Anti Trucker. Uh, doing a live stream or working on my next video. One of those three things. And now, Luke is here. We were just talking about you. Your French ears must have been burning. Um, so, uh, what do you think of my voice? Oh, yeah. Let me... Let me uh, so, so, we've all heard the Captain Foley con, but we also have another fine con. I have done far worse than kill you. I have hurt you, and I wish to go on hurting you. I shall leave you as you left me, as you left her, marooned for all eternity in the center of a dead planet, buried alive. Buried alive. So, <laughs> here we go. So we now have an Irish con and a Canadian con. So <laughs> who is next? Luke, I got to get a French con from you. You, you got to send it to me on Discord, man. Um... So, uh, we're, we're gonna, uh, so that was actually our, our very own, uh, Darth, the, um, Darth Revan, who is here right now. Uh, so awesome, awesome recording. I loved it. So, and so I want to try to get a couple more cons, uh, so that we can, uh, we can put together a con con. <laughs> so. So yeah, I love accents. I truly do, uh, Mary. I I really do. I think that I I I love uh, you know like the Irish accent. I love Scottish accent. I love English accent. I love uh, really the only accents I don't particularly care for. Well, honestly, really German. I'm not a big fan of the German accent. But not that Germany is a bad place or German people are bad. I just don't care for the accent. And also, honestly, the Southern U.S. accent not my favorite. Which is funny because I live in the southern U.S. Um, no point in doing an English con. J.J. ruined that one for everyone. I don't know, Alex. I think you're just trying to bow out of it. I think you could do me a nice English con. Um, Raven Satellite, Father Dougal. Yes. <laughs> hey, if you want to do a female Dutch con for me, Marlena, you absolutely send it to me on Discord. I'm going to get as many cons together as I can. Uh, and we're gonna we're gonna make a big con con video eventually of con from everywhere in the world. Uh, you need a Jamaican one. Well, I don't know anybody that does a good Jamaican accent that doesn't sound like they're trying to be racist. So. <laughs> uh, Germany has no word for fluffy. Why does that not surprise me? I really can't think of a non-sexy uh, accent if the woman is right. Well, yeah, bird of prey. Come on. Uh, uh, although I'll tell you. Uh, 
I would say a far northern Scottish accent. It's kind of hard to be sexy. I love the Scottish accent, but a far northern Scottish accent on a woman, hard to be sexy. Um, sovereign says, hey, our accent isn't that bad. Oh, you German sovereign? I'm sorry. I didn't, I'm not trying to offend you. Just like I said, it, I don't know. May, it, maybe it's just because it's a little too harsh um, compared to, say, the, the French accent, you know, which is just like, you know, reeks of like yeah we're awesome even though they're not i mean come on they're french um uh, luke throws five of his, of his evil imperial dollars in there and says completely forgot about the stream got caught in a discussion about the current space of space conquest con con can can quick bleach yes uh you want the quick bleach you got the quick bleach my friend Hey, you want to learn about Jesus? There's no such thing as hooker client confidentiality. <laughs> and by the way, for those of you that do like the Pepe Le Pew uh, mega chat reward, the next one that Joshua has been working on the last couple of days, I think it's going to be really good, is another classic group of cartoons. Uh, mashed up in an interesting new way. Only these are cartoons from the 80s as opposed to Pepe Le Pew really came around in like uh, the 60s. And so, uh, so yeah, that's the, it's going to be, uh, uh, we're going to see some very well-loved characters in a horrible, horrible way. Um, women make anything sexy in my experience. Well, women are definitely an improvement upon men in just about everything uh, as far as physical appearance, looks, sounds, yes. Um, and so why do we need to take away what little guys have and replace it with women in the movies, though? That's what I want to know. Because, you know, women are already freaking awesome. We don't need to make them more awesome. Um... I hate the, the hood accent or scumbag accents. Uh, talking toes, you, to, it's, uh, I bet you're, you're, you got a spastic moment there with your keyboard. Uh, I think it is talking to your something, my ears. Um, yeah, I could see that. Eponics con chisel, dizzle, city, awful fizzle. <laughs> that's wrong. That is just wrong. Uh, <laughs> I am lore reloaded X exe has crashed. Uh, well, I'm not sure about that. We might have to check and see uh, if that is in fact true because I don't think it is. Sir, we are being hailed. On screen. What is your problem? I am lore. Do you need help? I have a YouTube channel. My YouTube channel is Lore Reloaded. I guess their rubber band broke, right? I make YouTube go. Nine, nine, nine. Okay, Jay. Uh, Australia, Australian accent on a woman is pretty hard to beat. I don't know. I, it's it's not a bad accent, but I, I think English is better than Australian. Just got to say. Sorry. And I actually like uh, New Zealand uh, and, and uh, South African better than Australian as well, as far as the accent. I know they're very similar, but no. No more mail bashing. It's pissing me off. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you, Mary. I'm tired of it because it's like, like I said, most guys would agree women are freaking awesome, right? So we don't need to take masculinity, say that it's toxic, and then make women masculine. It, it doesn't make, it doesn't make sense. Uh, Marlene was checking out my uh, gene genealogy a couple of days ago. Found out my family went uh, went from a town on Dutch coast, I believe. Well, you guys might be related. Hmm. Admiral asks Andy Trekker, "What characters from the previous Trek shows do you think will be a part of the new Picard show?" Um, Michael Burnham. I think Michael Burnham will travel through time and save Picard from his masculinity. Other than that, no idea if they're going to get anybody. Uh, I know that uh, other cast members have been asked and said, no, we haven't been asked. Uh, so 
I, I don't know. Uh, I, I, but I don't think, at least, I, I don't think there's any immediate plans to bring anybody in. Uh, how about man worshiping? Would you worship Lord? Well, wait a minute, Luke. That's a self-contradictory statement. How about man worshiping? Would you worship Lord? Well, you said man worshiping. How would worshiping Lord be man worshiping? Anti trekkers say this name. Wow. Uh, oh, yeah. I remember you. You. You told me once how to say it, and now I can't remember. Um, uh, Aramico. <laughs> I, 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 I can't remember how to say it. So you like German accent. Uh, you don't like German accent, but you like South African. That doesn't make sense. Well, it's not like I think German accents are horrifically bad. Uh, I just, that's not my favorite. And South African is, is actually very similar to New Zealand. I have a, I have a cousin. I'm biased, though, for South Africa because I do have a cousin from South Africa uh, married into the family. Brad... Uh, Bad Wolf Gamer says, hashtag we are men, hashtag women are beautiful. Yeah, and then you should say hashtags, putting that hashtag is sexist. Uh, a hot Russian girl accent, so sexy to me, but then again, I'm Canadian. Well, yeah, so what do you know? Uh, not Laura, Luke, but maybe someone. <laughs> um... I was really hoping to get a Captain Nog miniseries, but only if Ronald D. Moore... Uh, yeah, that's not going to happen. I don't think we're going to honestly see anything of, of substance out of that Picard series, uh, except for whatever the new characters are going to be and Picard. Packlid Worship. Sorry, yes, that's that's a little more accurate there, Luke. Uh, Alex said like Packlid Worship. Yeah, you missed it. Luke uh, was confusing Man Worship with Lore Reloaded Worship, and so he, he now he, he was correcting himself as all. Well. Uh, Derek says, Mikey, Mary, Mary versus Mikey Spock. You mean Mary, our Mary versus Mikey Spock? Now, that's not fair because Mikey Spock can only be beaten by uh, Mrs. Antitrekker and Jesus. And if she fights Ray, the universe explodes. Now, we set those rules. And so I, 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 as much as I love Mary and I would want Mary to win, we also have to consider that Mary is recovering and having a very and, and so not at her physical peak. While Michael Burnham is always perfect in every way, so that's not even a fair fight. Um, but I'll bet Mary would give her hell before she goes down. Um, anti, if you are Lors Eddie Griffin to his he whore. Wow, not sure what you mean. Is is classic Dracula a German or Russian accent? Uh, neither. It's a. Um, Oh gosh, I'm trying to remember what Transylvania was supposed to where where it is, but yeah, it's it's not it's um it is an Eastern European country, but I can't remember what it is. Have you seen Nostalgia Critics comparity? I have not. Um, the Nostalgia Critic is kind of hit and miss with me, and so uh, I I have not seen. Are you talking about like the way he used the Kirk going con for the theme song? I remember that. But if he actually did something, I don't remember. Oh, now I want to hear a Plinket Con. Oh, that's easy. <sighs> I've done far worse than kill you. And you know, you're the most disappointing thing since my son. And that's why I want to hurt you. I'm going to leave you the way you left. Well, the way I left those hookers in my basement. All right, so... Um, are you sure Jesus would win against Michael Burnham? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Is it sexist if you pray a little harder when you get on the phone and both pilots are women? Yes. <laughs> Luke throws two more evil imperial dollars in there and says Mary would kick Mikey Spock with her wrench. Well, if she had the wrench and Mikey Spock was unarmed, I would give that to you. But that's not a fair fight either. However, in the meantime, we need... I now pronounce you man and turd. You may now kiss. Joshua, what are you doing? <laughs> nothing, nothing. I'm definitely not making you kiss law. I repeat, I am not making you kiss law. I'm definitely not. <laughs> and Captain Foley's taken off. You have a good one, Captain. Thank you for joining us. I truly do appreciate it. Um... 
Cinema Snob is a little more edgy. Are you talking about compared to uh, Nostalgia Critic? Um, I, I now I can't remember what I know. I've seen Cinema Snob, but it's not popping into my head. Uh, Anti, you've never seen Deuce Bigelow, Male Gigolo. Eddie Griffin was Rob Schneider's pimp. Oh, okay. Sorry, it's I I have seen that movie, but man, it's been a long time. I mean, let's be real; it's not a great movie. I mean, it's come on. Uh, Marlena likes likes by Mister Plinkett. Thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh, come on over and give me the sugar. Oh. Um, I am the wrench winch. Yes. Um, and so. I want to be a wrench. Well, you can be a wrench, Mr. Miles. You just can't have a wrench. Uh, you turd kissing. Yeah. I'd... Hey, that was a request from Bad Wolf. So blame him for that one. Um, Once upon a time I was, but Andy Tricker took it away and I have no wrench this day. That sounds like that could be a song, Mr. Miles. You should work on that. No film has ever gotten Dracula right. I don't know. I kind of liked the... Um, there's a couple of Dracula films I liked. Uh, I actually, I liked the Bram Stoker's Dracula. While I didn't like Keanu Reeves in the film, uh, I actually really liked Gary Oldman's portrayal of Dracula. And then I also uh, have to say that, uh, and I know this is a horrible, I know it's not a great movie, but it's one that I enjoyed, is Dracula 2000. Um, the Wes Craven film. I, I actually, I have to admit I like that one. Uh, which super chat is leaving for the new one coming? I don't know yet. You guys got to help me decide which one should I get rid of. Um, Jesus would use his carpenter skills. Yes. Shomer says my internet is back. Well, I didn't know it was gone, but I'm glad it's back. So now you can catch up. Damn you, Bad Wolf. Damn you. <laughs> yes. Definitely blame Bad Wolf. He, he did it. Mikey Spock can only win uh, against henchmen and men, male named characters. Female named characters can pass through her plot armor, right? No, that's the problem, Luke, is that actually, she, here's the problem, is that Mikey Spock can only be defeated by, uh, well, Jesus and Mrs. Antitrekker, and theoretically by someone who as, is as uh, politically lefty as she is, but the problem is if they were as politically lefty as she is, they would agree with her, and for the two of them to confront each other would destroy the universe as we know it. That's my official story, and I'm sticking to it. Sorry, I just got a text message. I just want to make sure everything was okay. All right. Um, Keanu Pet Peeves in What Really Grinds My Gears. Keanu Reeves... <sighs> yeah. I like him as an actor overall, but he was horribly miscast in Dracula. Whoa, we must totally kill this creature of the night. <laughs> Tilk, Tilk versus Worf. Um, honestly, from what I've seen so far, now keep in mind I'm only in season two, I would have to go with Worf uh, just because I see more combat skills with Worf than Tilk so far. But I've seen everything Worf has been in. I've only seen Tilk for the first you know, season and a half. So we'll see. Uh, I like what Red Letter did. Uh, what would you like to see happen with the new Picard show? I personally would like him to be uncovering the plot to destroy the Hobus star and stop it. I, I don't care about the new Picard show. That's the problem, is that they they burn their bridges with me. I I'm gonna watch it, and if it's great, cool. I will shout from the high heavens how it's Star Trek is back. But right now they're gonna have to they're gonna have to win me back over. I'm I don't care. Um. Uh, Jay Wiggs, hey, Trigger did a Rage Against the Machine stream? Mm, nope. Uh, clearly Wolf would win over Teal'c. At least from what I've seen so far, I would have to go with that. Uh, I'm talking about his review, Star Trek the Motion Picture, he did with the Angry Joe, copying this Nostalgia Critic Con parody into YouTube and see the video with the con part. I will check it out. Uh, let's see, I'll copy that now so that I don't forget. Which, I, because I always forget these things, because I'm dumb like that. Um, which movie touched your life? For me, it was Hitachi, after I got a dog who I took for a walk, and she tried, and she tried to run from a kitten and bumped her head. I love her so much. Um, hmm, movie that touched me, huh? Um, 
I don't know. Uh, there's, I mean, honestly, uh, Star Trek, the motion picture, uh, even though it's a horrible film, uh, seeing that as a kid was so exciting to me. Uh, even more exciting than seeing Star Wars. Uh, because it was just one of those moments why, where, wow, I've, I've watched these guys my whole life and now I can see them on the big screen. So I think, and, and you have to keep in mind that in 1979, the idea of a television show becoming a movie was unheard of, let alone with the same cast. And so it was, yeah, that was an incredible, incredible moment for me. Uh, I would also have to say, there's another childhood memory, going to see Godzilla vs. Megalon. Yes, a, a cheese fest of a movie, but that was one of the first movies I saw in theaters. Uh, the Shining was uh, the first R-rated movie I ever saw in theaters. Uh, King Kong, the 1976 version, uh, because in the original theatrical release, you got to see What's-Her-Name's boobs, and that was exciting for me because I was a kid. Uh, Braveheart, because, wow, what a freaking epic movie. Uh, yeah, so there's, uh, there's, there's a few. My fencing instructor was born in Transylvania in 1916, and he was Hungarian since he was part of Hungary at the time. Subsequently, he became part, it became part of Romania. Well, history lesson from Dr. Alex. And so, uh... Andy Checker, are you from Prussia? No, I am from California. However, my family is Scotch Irish. Um, Andy Checker, the only Picard story I'd want to see in the new series is Picard confronting the oh, the skin of evil again. Uh, honestly, I don't want to see another Picard story. I think he's too old. I don't care. And and they've already butchered Star Trek. I'm Picard to go back in time to stop STD's messed up timeline. Yeah, I, I would be down for that, but you know that's not going to happen. Um, if the movie touched anti Trekker, does that mean that he can sue Paramount CBS? Um, no. Uh, because it was consensual. Uh, my favorite movie of all time was The Abyss. That's what got me into sci-fi. See, I didn't, I couldn't get into The Abyss. I know, I remember when it came out, everybody was like, oh, this is the greatest movie ever. And to me, it just wasn't, eh. Uh, Luke, I saw a picture of you somewhere and it must be either here or Twitter. Okay. Andy Checker, I will not support you on this Enterprise versus Star Destroyer matchup. Hero ship versus villain ship? No thanks. Do either the Enterprise versus Home One or D7 versus a Star Destroyer. Well, here's the problem. And, and I understand what you're saying there, Luke. And that's why it's strictly a hardware comparison. I am not putting Captain Kirk up against Admiral Thrawn or anything like that. Uh, which is actually what like uh, Captain George wanted me to do. And big reason for that is honestly the simple fact that when you put characters in it, then you get into, yeah, good guy, bad guy, and stuff. But an Imperial Star Destroyer is a piece of equipment, as is, the, as is a Constitution-class starship. So you can do a fair comparison of the two. And it wouldn't be fair to do the, uh, a Constitution versus a Rebel ship, because the, the, let's be real, the Imperial ships were way more powerful, and it, and it wouldn't even be fair. Fair. Um, uh, boobies when you were a kid. Yeah, well, you know, hey, to a kid, that's a big deal. Well, to a guy, anyway. And let's see. Um, let's see. Mary's uh, boobies uh, when you're uh, not very unlikely. I'm not on Twitter. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I have no idea what Luke actually looks like, except that he's French and therefore kind of, has kind of an awkward look to him. Bacardi and Coke. <laughs> Did you see Charlie Chaplin at the theater? Thanks, Thomas. I'm not that old. Or are you talking about the, uh, the Robert Downey Jr. film? In which case, no, I did not. Um, my move, in fact, I've never seen it. My movie from childhood was Superman the Movie. That was a good one, too. Um, uh, I did love seeing that. That was the first time we saw that superheroes could be taken seriously. Connie versus Super Star Destroyer would be an even match. Um, I don't... I honestly don't think it would be. Uh, and uh, I can get into that in when I do it, but I don't think that the, the Connie would have a chance against the Super Star Destroyer. Uh, 
However, uh, I think that versus a regular Star Destroyer, that'll be an interesting fight. Wait a minute, Spock was his uh, family's name, so probably Herman Spock or Fred or Percy Spock. Uh, I have it on good authority that his real name is Michael Spock, and so the and he was named after his sister. Um, it must have been on YouTube. I saw you. I swear, Sandy brown hair and a bit of facial hair. Well, I know that's not Luke because he's French. And Trekker, here's something funny. I'm that killer. Here's. Here's something funny. I'm that killer stone cold. No idea what you're talking about. All right. See you later, everyone. Got to go. All right, Merlina. Go back to the Mirror Universe and have a great rest of your, uh, I guess, morning or night. Uh, Brad, Bad Wolf Gamer says, boobies for everyone. Yes. Uh, well, for guys, anyway. It's awesome. You know, well, gay women, I suppose. But, uh, yeah. Boobies are awesome. Andy Trigger, Sure. But you're still comparing a hero equipment with villain equipment designed to look fearsome yet fail. Well, except that I don't think that the Star Destroyers are designed to fail. Um, unlike the Death Star... Now, you could say that about the Death Star. The Death Star is designed to fail. However, um, as far as the Star Destroyers, they don't have an inherent weakness like that. And I would dare say that a Star Destroyer against a Constitution-class starship would fare better than anything that the Rebels or the Resistance had to offer. I don't think they have a single ship that could, as far as just hardware alone, could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Star Destroyer. I don't believe it exists. Uh, at least not in, in the films. Admiral Sabal is in the house, says, Yo, Mike Ant Antitrekker, how you doing, Admiral? Uh, Darren says, Antitrekker, when... You were at the premiere of Boris Carlos Frankenstein. Did you get a chance to check out one of those newfangled horseless carriages? Huh? Darren, you're pushing it today. Um, uh, Admiral says, Andy Trekker, what do you think of Henry leaving the role of Superman and the DC wants to focus on Supergirl movie plus Ben is leaving after Suicide Squad 2? <sighs> I think that Warner Brothers needs to completely shut down, do a regrouping, and rebuild their DC brand. I absolutely am just done with everything that Warner Brothers has done involving the DC universe. Some people try to say, oh, but Wonder Woman was good. Wonder Woman was good, but it was just a rehash of Captain America. It was not nothing original, nothing really exciting. It was just... She has boobs, which, of course, is a natural improvement, as we have already established. But that isn't, in and of itself, make it a great film. People are acting like this is the greatest film of all time just because it happens to start a woman. And I'm sorry, it's a good film, but that doesn't elevate it. It's just another film. Um, and so, the... But... but the, the fact that they have screwed the pooch so hard with Justice League, they just, they really, okay, Warner Brothers, here's some free advice. First of all, whatever projects you have in the works that aren't completely done, like I know Aquaman's already in the can, fine, go ahead and release that in, in a couple of months. Every other project you have involving DC Comics, scrap it right now. Don't even get started on Suicide Squad 2. Do not get started on Wonder Woman 2. Don't do anything. Now, now that you've stopped, hire, hire someone who understands the intellectual property of the DC universe and who is smart enough to coordinate multiple projects. Now that you've got that person, you give that person the ability to bring in directors and writers to put together individual films under that one person's guidance to bring together a cohesive universe and don't rush into it. You make one film at a time, you make them awesome, and you build up until you get to a freaking Justice League movie. You don't panic and hit the hit the panic button and run into it. All right? That's that's what I have to say about it. Sorry. Sorry. 
come on, ladies and gentlemen. 46 watching, only 15 likes. Come on, good people. Give Andy Trekker a few likes. Vote early and often. If only you could vote often. Uh, Darren says, Gal Godot was fun to look at, and if they redo the DCU, I hope they leave her unchanged. No, they have to restart from scratch. You cannot just keep one person because that's, that's the problem. Uh, you can't do that. The home one is more than capable of destroying a starter's rear, a little less powerful yet resistant, better firing arcs, more maneuverability, better fighter complement. Every rebel starfighter is superior to almost any imperial fighter. Okay, on a fighter to fighter level, I'll give that to you. In the, at least the X Wings have shields, or as Lore would say, shields. Um, but the, the, I don't think the Alliance is overall superior to the Empire as far as design. I think the X-Wing is a superior design to a TIE fighter. But that's a far cry from uh, the, the Rebels being superior to the Empire. Oh my god, Suicide Squad 2. No, I'm going uh, to Mar Modern Marvel Movies is now a comedy show ordeal. Yeah, I know. Point is, the Alliance Space design is superior to the Empire. I, I, I have to disagree with you, Luke. And, and here's the thing. Honestly... As far as the uh, the raw power of an X-Wing or a TIE Fighter, it's not going to make a huge amount of difference. Um, and, I mean, now, and, and I don't know, and I don't think Captain George is here, so, but I would ask a serious question. So, if you're talking about Home 1 being a better representative ship, uh, how many X-Wings does it carry? That's a serious question. How many and I don't want some random number pulled out of somebody's butt. I want to know exactly. Uh, through the magic of plot armor, the Alliance always wins. That's very true. Uh, Warner Brothers should most likely hire Ryan Johnson to make the reboot of the DCU movies. Josh, that was just wrong. Send the Star Destroyer Mega One, they go insane. Um, no. I read a new theory on the MCU. The Hulk appears... Uh, to be the next verge, merged version in the promo art in the next film, which means they've removed Hulk's toxic masculinity. Oh, jeez. I hope that you're wrong about that, because and I haven't seen anything, any real evidence that Marvel is going SJW, and I don't think that they are, because they have made buku bucks off of doing it right. And so if they, if they suddenly screw the pooch and start going all social justice in their films, whatever. Um, plus, they were thinking about having Michael B. Jordan replace Henry as Superman. Yeah, I, I've I've seen that. I don't. I would. That's still that's in the rumor category. Uh, nothing confirmed. However, that's not going to happen. Uh, and it has nothing to do with him being black. Although that is kind of stupid to try and force a, a a race change just to change it. But uh, Michael B. Jordan is not a good fit for. Superman. He's just not. Uh, but whatever. Quantum. Um, Taco Cat spelled backwards is Taco Cat. That is absolutely true. And that's why I'm wearing the shirt. Uh, say it was a good movie. What would you think of future flashes and at the end of the movie Barry gets blue light on his desk, touched it, and his uniform becomes blue lantern all as well. If it was a good movie, I'm okay with it. The problem is that uh, it's not um, uh, it, it, it's not going to happen. Okay, We're, they're not they're not interested in making good movies. They're interested in making whatever they their focus group says will make cash, and their focus groups are composed of idiots. Luke says he thinks 144 fighters, so double what a star destroyer can carry. Uh, be right back. All right, I'll, I'll I'll wait for you for a few minutes anyway. Uh, record Inta. Okay. 120 Rebel Alliance fighters from the home one can carry, according to legends. All right. But do we have anything? I mean, now. Yeah. Um, Darren says I actually think Marvel will go SJW because they've now made so much money they feel it's safe. Um, I don't know. It, now, if you're right, you're right. But I hope you're not. Um, but if they actually make that assumption, remember that up until The Last Jedi, everybody was still saying 
that Star Wars was the number one franchise and Marvel was number two. Nobody's trying to argue that anymore. In the Anti-Trekker movie, Anti-Trekker will be played by Idris Elba. <laughs> hey, I would be honored, but no. Luke says, never put my face on Discord. Yeah, I don't... Yeah, I don't know why um, uh, why Mary's obsessing over your face, Luke. I think she I think she's secretly in love with you. I think it's just the French accent, even though we've never heard it. I'm back. What did I miss? Oh man, you missed all sorts of stuff. Um, unfortunately, you, and yeah. However, there is a way for you to find out what all you missed, and that is by putting a one hundred dollar super chat in right now, and I will repeat everything that was said while you were gone, uh, which. Wouldn't be worth it, but it was worth a try. A Type Type 1 Star Destroyer carries 72 TIE Fighters, different numbers of walkers, shuttles, and a bunch of troop transports. Yes. But we were talking about the Rebel ship, the Home 1. Uh, yes. Record Itna. I'm sure that that's something, and I'm just not getting it, but uh, think about it. Okay. I... I Oh, I see. It's my name backwards. Very uh, so. My name is Rec Record Itna. Very very clever. Should have put the hyphen. Then I would have got it. I'm sorry. I bleeping hate those new color spectrum cores in the DC comics. The Green Lantern cores was enough. I tend to agree. And now Alex is yelling, "Check Discord!" Because he obviously put something on Discord. You know, Alex, you should learn to just send it to me in a, in a direct message, and that way. Uh, you know, you don't have to panic about me seeing it in the general chat. And so now I have to s catch up to whatever is current because I haven't been in the general chat. Uh, uh -oh. oh, we got, we got English Khan. Let's hear. I've done far worse than kill you. I've hurt you. And I wish to go on hurting you. I shall leave you as you left me, as you left her marooned for all eternity in the center of a dead planet buried alive buried alive awesome all right let me turn that down so that i don't blow out everybody with my with the echo um so the canons of the new vader's comics say 10 squadrons of starfighters um well, what's a, what's a squadron? And, and you know, see, that's the problem. The canon is so contradictory sometimes. But the official res, uh, sources that I've been able to find, uh, which, and Captain George has been actually helping me a little bit with it, show, yeah, it was in, in the order of about 70 fighters. Um, but whether it's 70 or 100, you know, I, I don't know. Uh, 100, and so, I, I yeah. Um. I wish I could give you my Wisconsin accent, Con. Well, you can. Just record it and send it to me on Discord. 120 Rebel Alliance fighters or 120 bombers the home one can carry versus an Imperial Star Destroyer, 48 TIE fighters, and 12 bombers can carry according to Legends. See, now, first of all, I've heard more fighters, but um, you also have to keep in mind that the Star Destroyer itself is much more heavily armed. Um, and in theory, could take out Home One before the fighters could take out the Star Destroyer. Uh, he sounded like Josh. Okay, <laughs> we need a Cockney accent, Con. <laughs> the guy who plays Amos uh, Amos on the Expanse reached out to me on Twitter because my whole page is the Expanse. He wants to meet. Lamo, I said I'm nothing special, just a huge fan. Are you kidding me? Don't tell him that. Tell him. Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm going through all this, 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 these treatments and this therapy and I'm hurting and I'm suffering and please come visit me so I can take a picture with you and post it all over the internet. Don't tell him no, assuming you like Amos. Um, then, you know, you should, you, should, you should meet up with him. Um, assuming he's, it was really him. Josh has confirmed Home 1 carries 120 Alliance Starfighters, vastly superior to TIE Fighters, hull, shields, targeting system, fighters, firing arcs. Everything is better, except raw firepower slightly better on Star Destroyers. I wouldn't say slightly, but uh, but I would. But, but here's the thing, and, and this is really the bottom line of it, Luke. 
there is no other capital ship on Star Wars that that is as iconic as the Star Destroyer. And you know, so yes, we could do we could do breakdowns of the other ships eventually as well. But I my, the whole idea is that that's the ship people wanted to see. Uh, that is, and I love the design of the Star Destroyer. Um, the Re the Rebellion ships, honestly, none of them are very impressive looking, uh, except for the X-Wings and the Millennium Falcon. Nothing else that the Rebels have goes, ooh. But everything the Empire has looks incredible. Uh, well, gotta go hop on my moose and go grocery shopping. See y'all next time. Have a great night. All right, make sure you get some Yaks milk while you're out there, too. Um... Andrew Checker, not going to take out Home 1 anytime soon. Mon Calamari shields are crazy powerful. According to whom? No, I want to meet him. He sent me the details. Well, good, Mary. When he does, you need to like record a little hangout with him and then post it on YouTube and show it off to all your friends. And then you got to get him to come out to Tennessee and visit with me. Uh, as long as he does not bring, uh, I can't remember the guy's name, uh, I know his last name, Straight, the guy that plays uh, Holden. As long, long as he doesn't come with him, because my wife thinks that he's like the hottest thing ever, so she's not allowed to go near him. Um, and then we never heard from Mary again. Yes. <laughs> Don't forget the Mary Sue factor, Luke. Uh, she can destroy the MC-80 cruiser single-handed. Well, <laughs> Home One is an MC-80 Star Cruiser that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with an Imperial Star Destroyer in Legends. But I'm not going based on Legends. Uh, bit late to the party. What topic are we on tonight? Right now, we're talking about uh, Luke is pissed at me. Um, well, I mean, not, not pissed in a, like, really angry pissed. More of a annoyed with me. Um, because of the fact that uh, I want to do a, a serious analyzing of... A, what I think would be an absolutely epic battle, namely this. And sorry, I got to show off that picture because I think it came out really good. I made this myself. Um, so I want to put up a constitution. And by the way, this picture is to scale. Uh, I made sure when I when I put these models into Blender, uh, that Star Destroyer is 1,600 meters and the Enterprise there is 289 meters. They are to scale with each other. Anyway, um, the uh, Stephen Strait, thank you, Mary. Uh, yeah, he, he's not allowed in my house. The um, but yeah, the, so I want to do this battle, and Luke is saying that that I should do uh, the the rebel uh, the the rebel flagship because it's a more powerful ship, and that the the star destroyer is a weaker ship in comparison when you take into account the. Uh, uh, the fighter complement, which is true that the fighter complement of a rebellion ship would be better. However, these, this picture right here, and the reason I, ha I had so much fun creating this picture is because in my mind, these are the two most iconic ships in science fiction. And so, uh, you know what, and when... First of all, the USS Enterprise from the 1960s uh, you know, gave us a whole new era of sci-fi that wasn't flying saucers and, and just guys in rubber suits. Number two, granted, there were some guys in rubber suits and the occasional flying saucer, but that's not what it was all about. Uh, number two, the moment that that Star Destroyer flew into the camera frame in the original Star Wars changed motion pictures forever. And so, yeah. Godzilla versus an Imperial Star Destroyer. Oh, the Star Destroyer would, would waste Godzilla. Um, yeah. Thomas says the Discovery is more iconic. Uh, no, I, I, I'm sorry. You, you pronounce that slightly wrong. It's not more iconic. It's moronic. You got you to pronounce it right. Uh, Connie could take out a Super Star Destroyer 3.25 uh, times out of 10. <laughs> We will, we will get into that conversation. Uh, Darth Revan says, Discord, Discord! <laughs> what do you do now, Darth? Uh, let me go to... Uh, what do you do? I 
don't see. I see you wrote some stuff in another language. It's Khan's speech in Irish for the laugh. Try to read. It. Oh, that's. Read me I brand for none. Yeah, I can't read that. <laughs> I see Captain Redneck said Gesundheit. <laughs> Uh, please check your direct message in Discord. Wait, wait, you guys are always doing this to me. I'm in the middle of... Did, did I hear uh, the occasional rubber suits of fly saucers? Yes. I mean, I mean, come on. I gotta admit, it was it was the 60s. It was cheesy. Um, yes, I do see the link there for Home 1 there. Uh, Sci-Fi Sith. Um, and I won't deny that Home 1 is probably would be a... Well, I don't, I don't think it would be a fair fight, but it would at least be closer... Um, but I still, I, I, I still want to see the most iconic ship. Uh, so let's see. Length is 1300 meters. So it's about 300 meters shorter than a Star Destroyer. Um, but, uh, let's see. Yeah, a lot less weapons on it, but it has a lot more fighters and a lot less crew. So, I mean, I, I would dare say, yeah, the ship itself, I, I'm sorry, I, I know Luke said it could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Star Destroyer, but uh, only on a suicide run. A fight between red shirts and stormtroopers would be quite interesting. Well, we already did that. Don't you guys remember? Wow, I tell you, you guys, you guys like, never, never remember anything. <laughs> Heart attack. So we settled that argument. Stormtrooper fires, misses, redshirt dies anyway. That's that's the that's the summation. Um, I'm really scared though. Don't know what to say. I want to ask questions without grilling him. But he said, and I quote, "I would love to meet with you." He's the one who brought it up. Mary, just just relax. If you know, either, well, here's the only thing. You do realize that he plays a psychotic character that's just like, oh yeah, you, you want me to kill him? Yeah, I'll kill him, no problem. And you don't mind if I kill you, do you? you? You realize that's what he plays. So just be ready for that. Other than that, no problem, just hang out with him. I say, you know, if he wants to meet and you guys are just going to hang out, just hang out, have a good time. And take lots of pictures. Um, what do we do to get a free super chat? Uh, well... Someone mentioned red shirt versus stormtrooper, so I just threw that in there. Constitution class versus star uh, star destroyer versus a battle star. Bird of prey. Battle star would be at a real disadvantage. Uh, I mean, uh, unless if you were talking about battle star from uh, the nineteen seventy seventies uh, battle star galactica. A little bit better of a chance just because they had lasers and stuff, but um, yeah, as far as the reboot Galactica, yeah, not even close. I sent one of what Davros was in place of Khan. Check the Discord. Ugh. I hate you guys. All right, let me see. All right. And you see, now you guys keep putting it in the general chat. You need to send it to me in a direct message, please. Send it to me in the direct message, because if you put it in general, I will lose it, and, and then we, and we won't have it for the con-con. I've done far worse than kill you. I've hurt you, and I wish to go on hurting you. I shall leave you as you left me, as you left her, marooned for all eternity in the center of a dead planet. Buried alive. Buried alive. All right, so 1978 Battlestar Galactic First is an Imperial Star Destroyer. That I that would take some serious research to figure out. To be honest with you, that's a that's a closer fight than most people think because Vipers and Tie Fighters are both basically unshielded but uh, fast. Tie Fighters seem a little more more maneuverable, but I think that Vipers are faster, especially with their turbo boost. Um, and then you have the actual Galactica herself versus the Star Destroyer. Um, let me take, I'm not 100% sure, 
So, man, I hate you guys for this. always making me look stuff up. And Sovereign, I see you put those five evil Imperial dollars in. Give me just a second, and I mean, because I want to see Battle Star Galactic 1978. Um... No, not the length of the movie, you idiot. Uh, let's see. Trying to see how big is the Galactica. According to, well, the, the reboot Galactica is 1,445 meters, which is uh, pretty close to the size of the, um, uh, of, the uh, of the Star Destroyer. So they're, they're not that far apart. I think that would actually be an interesting battle. Uh, Matt, now that you, jeez, you, you're like, let's see. Uh, let's see. Speed of mind, careful uh, light speed. We knew that. She has a complement of 150 Vipers. Mm. Uh, let's see. But that, you know, where's the original? That's the remake. Dang it. Uh, let's see. And that's a Viper. Let's try this one. Nah, it's stupid. Nah, let's see. Welcome to the Battle Circle. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's the... Uh... Yeah, I'm not sure. But it looks like it's close. They're close in size. And I would dare say that the Galactica has about double the fighter complement. So then we need to break down the, the actual capital ship weapons and defenses. So Sovereign throws five of his evil Imperial dollars in. Thank you so much, Sovereign. And he did it because I did the free red versus white. But just because of that, well, then we're going to have to, you know, revisit that fight. Let's take a look at the instant replay, Jack. Well, it looks like the red shirt is doing pretty good here. White just can't connect. Oh, no. What's this? Red shirt has a heart attack and is down for the count. That's my best boxing announcer voice. Never said I could do a boxing announcer. Uh, that's not me that's saying that. It's Legends plus Cannon. Besides, Home 1 is a carrier. Fighters are the weapons. The Enterprise can't take out 120 fighters like a snap. Well, we'll get into that when I do the video. But I think you will be unfortunately for forced to understand why that's not an entirely accurate statement uh the 1978 galacta had lasers but unlike the reboot it could not take a direct hit from a nuke pegasus was vaporized by nukes well actually pegasus uh we don't know what happened to pegasus and so pegasus was missing at the end of that episode uh a new trek warship you see an oberth calling for help and then it slipstreams out and destroys the Jem'Hadar giant ship that vanishes. You don't see it for another eight episodes, and it's our new hero. Okay. An Oberth ship? Really? Happy Oberth Day to you. <laughs> I seem to recall what was a line from, from Blink in Doctor Who. I'll have to watch that later. Okay. And by the way, for those of you that haven't seen it, and uh, you can probably see the, the printer's been busy working, but I do have a prototype of the USS Anti-Trekker plaque done here. And by the way, it's hard to see, but the little screws in the corners are actually the Delta Shield. Um, my own little touch there. But yes, so this is uh, the first prototype. It's, a, it's kind of in draft mode, but very sturdy. Um, but... I'm I'm trying uh, I'm trying a higher resolution print now, so we'll see how that comes out. Uh, let's see. I, let's see. Uh, thanks, Andy Trigger. Love your animation. Thank you, Sovereign. Hey, I love your money, so it's a fair trade. <laughs> Wow, that sounded horrible. Uh, hello, Anti-Trekker. Hey, Daniel. How, how are you today? Hope you're well. Having a great day. Got back from Walmart. Got Luigi's Mansion, Dark Moon, Halloween, and Halloween 2. Sounds like you got a fun-filled time ahead of you. Uh, Halloween and Halloween 2. Um, well, Halloween, obviously, is the best of that franchise, but I think H2O is, is a close second. And I'm really looking forward to H4O or... Uh, 
coming up in a couple of weeks here. I was just teasing about the DS9 and the Dvorak V. I wanted to know. I figured as much. Uh, I know some people think that uh, for some reason people think that if you if you show hey I like this more than this that means you hate something then no. Uh, direct message equals confusing people give up. Yeah, direct message means so if you're in Discord you tap on my name and you can send me a direct message. So when you record those audio clips you send it as a direct message to me and that way it is saved in, for me so that I can download it and, uh, and use it for our con con. That's why I want you to direct message me so that I don't lose those, the, the little bit of gold. Um, so, uh, Galactica is protected by uh, both electronic shields and heavy metal double uh, pocket hatch shield that covers the panoramic vid bridge viewpoint. That is true uh, as far as the the viewport. I don't know about the electronic shields. I do know that they do have the big heavy armor that closes up over the viewport, which, by the way, means that the Galactica cannot be taken out the same way that the Super Star Destroyer was taken out in Return of the Jedi. Um, and Luke says, in my opinion, a Star Destroyer has absolutely no chance to win against the Enterprise. Home one has. Fair game is the uh, fair game is the way, man. I disagree, um, and I, I I think I think actually the Imperial Star Destroyer has a little bit better of a chance against the Enterprise, but uh, I will get into that as far as why that is, Luke. And and I'm not going to get into the home one thing in my Star Destroyer video, but I think you'll understand from what I say in the Star Destroyer video why home one would not fare well. Um, but I do think uh, you know do it. I'm gonna ha I would have to do some serious research, but I do think it might be worth it to check out the Galactica versus an Imperial Star Destroyer. Um, the warship is the hero ship, uh, first pure warship class, and the commander of the O Berth is the new captain after his promotion, and the crew laugh at him for being posted to an O Berth. <laughs> well, that's that's not very nice. Halloween was five bucks at Walmart. I was lucky when I found it because uh, they're always sold out. Um, yeah, classic Halloween, That's that can be hard to find. I have the box set of all the Halloween movies, which, of course, now there's one more. Ugh, bastards. But, yeah, so uh, me and Mrs. Antitrekker usually watch them all, like, once every year or so. Uh, Since becoming a father, have you gotten a severe case of dad jokes yet? Oh, yeah, I've had dad jokes for a long, long time. Come on, you, have you do you not watch my live streams? Um... Doc says it depends on who commands the Star Destroyer. Well, that's, but they say I'm taking that factor out of it. I'm not comparing command ability because that's where I think it would be unfair to put, like, for example, this is not the Enterprise. This is a Constitution class starship. Uh, this is not James T. Kirk. And you're, when we're assuming uh, that the captains of both ships and the crews of both ships are 100% equal as far as skill. Uh, so that it has nothing to do with who's better. Uh, Jay says, anti, I'm retarded. Okay. Um, what, are you okay there, Jay? Or did you just, were you just tricking me to say that? Star Trek 3.14, last logical circuit. <laughs> um, so, Antrager, stop skipping my comments. Oh, I'm sorry, did I skip your comment? I, You know, I love when you guys say... And that's funny, the, the, the comment before was you skipped my comments. All right, so let me go back a little bit more. And Trekker, here's the anime you should you should watch. It's called Lupin the Third. Lupin the Third. Well, you see, now Mrs. Anti Trekker is more into anime than me. There's only a couple of animes that I've really enjoyed. Death Note being... Uh, really, Death, Death Note and Akira. Um, so, the point you have been... Uh, to the point you've been seeing SG-1, Gauld Mothership versus a Star Destroyer. Well, I have yet to see the Gauld Mothership do anything uh, impressive at all. I mean, they basically showed up at Earth and got blown up, and then they showed up somewhere else and did nothing. So I would have to give that to Star Destroyer, but that's... And, and, the, and the Death Gliders, while cool, do not seem like they are as fast, agile, or well-armed as a TIE Fighter. Um, and so, yeah, 
Uh, just because Home 1 has shields and it's a trap, Akbar. <laughs> uh, just, uh, let's have the latest incarnation of Godzilla. Okay. To the point, uh, you have seen us. Oh, I already read that. Uh, Post DS9 Galaxy versus Enterprise E. Uh, well, the Enterprise E, it's stated flat out in, in First Contact that the Enterprise E is the most advanced starship in the fleet. And therefore, uh, any, any type of ship that predates uh, Star Trek First Contact is inferior to the Enterprise E. Uh, but so you could argue about, so and that includes Voyager, by the way. Uh, so you could, but uh, the, because Voyager was launched before First Contact. Uh, direct messages so that gem will never be lost. Thank you, Alex. I do appreciate it. And uh, I can't remember who was it that sent me the Davros one. You need to direct message me that one, man. Please do if you haven't already. Um, because that was really good. Hello, oh, I hope you ignore the drama on Discord. Ah, it's four against one. I, you know what? Honestly, as far as the Discord stuff, I, I... I, I honestly don't have time to read the chat very often. And so, yeah, most of the drama that goes down on Discord, I don't partake in. And that's why I have Captain George and the other moderators on Discord uh, they, that get to deal with the fun. Uh, I'd agree with that, but I don't want to spoil it for anti Uh Oh, okay. So talking to Luke, I'm sure it's about something with SG-1 that I missed. Um, did you get that at the checker? Uh, the 1978 Galactus 1,843 meters long. 2004 is 1,437. So the so the 1978 Galactica is slightly larger than an Imperial Star Destroyer uh, by about 243 meters. Uh, Bad Wolf says I sent it to you. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate it. We don't want to lose any of that. Anti checker. What kind of ice cream do you like? Uh, fudge swirl. Enterprise E, most advanced ship in the fleet, yet panels blow up and, and rumble flies out the wall. That never happened on the D. Well, that's because, um, quantum. I mean, because, you know, Voyager, hey, you know, but, but, you know, the thing about Voyager is that they have panels blow up and, and wires flying out and sparks flying everywhere, and yet... The ship never shows any sign of wear and tear. I swear, they've got the best janitorial staff on Voyager of any starship in the history of the Federation. Alex says, ew, and then throws three turds in there. So are you saying that you just, like, pooped yourself? Or are you okay there, Alex? Uh, anti trucker how would you feel about a country called Trunk? Um, I'd feel like it's a place where other countries would store their stuff. Uh, Federation ships are so shoddy, who built them half price contractors? Well, in the 24th century, yeah, I think so. Um, they should make a show about that, about a country called Trunk? Oh, my, I, oh, your ice cream, you don't like, well, it's, Jeez, Alex, you're well. What's your favorite ice cream, Alex? Uh, it made me laugh. Uh, the most advanced ship in the fleet. Yeah, until next Tuesday when the USS Michael Burnham is launched and it can one-shot Q and her sister ship, the Mary Sue. Yeah, uh, I think he shattered himself. Yes. Um, poor guys cleaning up the mess on Voyager after the battle. Yeah, I, I, but they're so good at it. 60% of a battle, battle star is a giant level of some kind of metal hull. Yeah, the Galactica is, is meant to take a beating. Um, and so, I mean, those ships, I, I mean, at least as far as the look, if you look at the design of the Galactica and other battle stars, they look like they can take a punch. A quantum Voyager uh, versus a Sovereign class ship. Well, I still, I mean, you, you can't, you, you have to... If the same, if they're in the same universe, sorry, it's the Sovereign is going to squash a Intrepid class ship. They are just not on the same level. I mean, I, you would say that you know uh, the the Intrepid class, you could argue, is a long range research vessel, or possibly, if you go warship, it's a destroyer at best. 
whereas this sovereign class is a heavy heavy cruiser it's almost a battleship and so there is no way that the intrepid could go toe to toe with it whoever built the Ober class built all the ships of the 24th century i think you're right about that um Josh, I'll look at it. Uh, let's see. USS Harry Kim, a ship that never gets that just never never gets deployed. Now the USS Harry Kim gets deployed, but it never gets promoted. Not to mention what the janitorial stuff had to deal with. Voyager spotted ten board cubes. I'll bet the floor, wall, ceilings, brown mist. Oh yeah, a sovereign manned with pack lids versus the defiant. <laughs> Uh, well, that depends. Do the Packlids know how to fly the ship? And so, if the Packlids do indeed know how to fly the ship, then I would have to give it to the Packlids. But if they don't, then they're just going to get on and say, We need help. And then they get killed. Uh, unless, of course, it's... You know, the Defiant is in an aggressive mood. and Or uh, if Defiant is manned by actual Starfleet personnel, chances are when they go, we need help, they'd beam over and help them and then get killed. Uh, the USS Al-Qaeda, watch out, it's explosive. Uh, the Intrepid's design is great for hit-and-run tactics, not for out all I bet. Yeah, it's not really meant to be a toe-to-toe a -to -toe battleship like, like a Sovereign class. Um, Antrick, I gotta go. Also, can you read my last comment? Well, I, I just did. That was your last comment. See what I did there. But it says, I went on please please rewind live stream and called him Turkey and he called me a headless chicken. Well, why why why'd you call him a turkey? Are the Packlids captained by lore? No, they're not captained by lore, they are worshipped. Uh, uh the, the pack lore is the Packlid god. And so they worship idols of lore. Uh and so yes. And in fact, if you look at, if you go to the, uh, uh, if you happen to go to the Packlet Homeworld and you look in the porno section, you will find. And so, yes, uh, that's, that's Packlet culture right there. Um, sovereign man by all TOS red shirts versus an ISD man by Packlets. Um. Well, since the red shirts, keep in mind, red shirts do get the mission done sometimes, so I'd have to give it to the red shirts. Mr. Miles says, I'm a towel. Well, then you're a bathrobe. What's your favorite taco? Any that's in my mouth. Uh, based on size and crew, I would label Intrepid class a frigate at best. Uh, it would probably, yeah, I mean, the, the problem is, is that the way that our naval ships don't necessarily translate perfectly to Star Trek, but yeah, you're probably right. If the Universal Translator is, uh, is broken, Packlet sounds like SJW. <laughs> oh, jeez. What you think of a post DS9 show where they say Cisco returned 40 years ago and he buried uh, and is buried on Bajor and was killed in a Jemadar raid and the Enterprise E was destroyed? Well, that's all backstory. That doesn't tell me what the show is about. And so that, I, as far as I couldn't have an opinion on that because you're just telling me historical events. Now, what happens on the show, and what does Cisco's death and the Enterprise E's destruction have to do with our current show? Uh, John says anti cheese or cheese its or cheese nips. Ooh, um, well, I'm not allowed to have either anymore, but I would go with cheese its. Um, Packlid. Manned Oberth versus First Order Manned Superstar Destroyer. Oh, uh, Packlid Manned Oberth, easily. In fact, just a Packlid holding his breath in the vacuum of space would defeat the First Order Manned Superstar Destroyer from what we've seen. Uh, Daniel says, what are SJW specifically? Oh, man, that is a whole topic in and of itself. Uh, well, the term SJW stands for Social Justice Warrior. And typically, a Social Justice Warrior warrior is now please keep in mind there is a difference between being a liberal and being a leftist all right liberals can be perfectly reasonable people they're just left of center as opposed to conservatives right 
a, a a leftist is the liberal equivalent of what we what we like to refer as the alt right on the conservative side. A leftist is an extremist that does not see rationality and reason. They only see their cause and their ideology, and everything is reflective of that cause and ideology. Now, in the mind of the modern SJW, that cause and ideology mostly revolves around sexuality. And so it's about gender, and it's about uh, sexual identity, uh, and sexual preference, and, how, and also race. And those things are primary in the mind of an SJW, and they see everything as an assault against those things. So, if you have a film that uh, stars a man, that film is toxic. It, masculinity in and of itself is toxic. Uh, and so, if you dislike a film like Ghostbusters 2016, The Last Jedi, Ocean's 8, you, if you don't like one of those films, it's strictly because you're a misogynist. If you don't like the idea that Michael B. Jordan was uh, being considered to play Superman, you're a racist. All right, so... It, and I, I mentioned that I, I mentioned racism, uh, Luke, but it's secondary really to gender. Uh, racial identity is secondary to uh, their their gender identity and and sexual identity. But the uh, so that in a nutshell is the SJW. They are a left wing nut job, and it's unfortunate. That, you know, and, and obviously the funny thing is, is that I know a lot of decent liberals that are really sick of the SJW movement. And what I want to say to any, and, and if you, any of you guys fall into that category, because I know a few of you guys are left of center and that's perfectly fine because you know, I'm, I want to be welcoming to everybody, uh, as, as possible. But if you're a liberal and you're sick of the SJWs, Welcome to how the conservatives have been feeling about the alt-right for a while now. Uh, so, you know, not every conservative is alt-right. Not, not every liberal is a leftist. And unfortunately, these extremist groups are trying to ruin it for everybody. John asks the all-important KY or Astroglide. Astroglide. Uh, because it says Astro right there in the title, which makes it more space-like, I guess. Um, 21 likes, much better. Yes, but, well, I show 22 now, but that's still only half the audience. What's the deal? Not just racism, any form of minority. Pedophiles are a minority. Well, uh, we're not going to even get into that again. I'm not going on another epic rant about Roman Polanski. Uh, at least the alt-right can be funny. SJWs can't. Um, yeah, they, yeah, well, they do They do take themselves extremely seriously. Um and according to SJWs, all right is far right. That's absolutely true. But in fairness, uh, uh, the alt right tends to think that all all left is far left, and that's honestly the core of the problem. In at least in the United States, I can't speak for Europe and, and the rest of the world because I don't follow your politics. My apologies to my my friends in Europe there, but in the United States, we have become so polarized. That it used to be, and, and I know I'm older than most of you guys, but back in, in, the, in the 70s and 80s, the political left and political right would argue and fight over the issues. However, there was always respect and there was always a, a certain level of decorum. And now it's just hate. It is absolutely just hate. Those people are trying to destroy this country. Those people hate immigrants. Those people, uh, you know, want to want everyone to die or whatever. You know, it's just, ugh, I'm tired of it. Um, I have political compass and I'm left of center. I, uh, I'm in a mixed race marriage. And yet, according to the SJW, so I'm still far right. Of course. And yeah, and and the problem, yeah, I, the SJW thing is, uh, I I can't stand the whole movement. Um, it's just, it needs to just go away. In all of Trek, how many Starfleet engineers' techs died in the warp nacelles when a ship has that emergency warp to escape destruction? 
with no warning. As far as I know, there was only one recorded incident, but he wasn't really dead. See the episode? Court Martial. Um, just teasing you, uh, uh, some more have, uh, had some deep fried chicken fingers fries. Oh, stop it. Stop it, Sci-Fi Sith. You're killing me. I really don't get the SJWBS. I don't either. Um, but yeah. Newt Gingrich's legacy. Reagan and Tip O'Neill will never happen again. That's sad, but true. But you see, here's the thing, Paul. I don't blame Newt Gingrich alone. Uh, I, I think that's the legacy of Newt Gingrich and Bill Clinton. Their era was the end of civility in politics. And so you can't just throw it on one or the other. And that's the problem. If you do throw it on one or the other, that's part of the problem. Um, Chipotle or Moe's? Mm. I would have to go with Moe's because I love the fact that when you go into Moe's, they go, welcome to Moe's. I don't know if they do that where you're at, John, but they do here. Um, they are degenerates. It is disgusting. Well, uh, assuming you're talking about the SJWs, I, I don't know if I would say degenerates. That makes me sound like I'm 80. But, uh, yeah. We need to start a left-handed social justice movement. Yes. I, I, I'm with you there, Miles. We'll, we'll agree on that one because I'm left-handed. When will you start selling strips of gold-pressed latinum? Ooh, that's not a... I'll have to start saying that, like, the anti-trekker plaque is actually infused with latinum. Then, then that way I can, like, sell it for big bucks. Anyway, guys, I do. Have I ever been to Hooters? I have not been to a Hooters, and that's just me. Although I will tell you, um, I shouldn't tell you because I should make a super chat out of it. But I'm going to tell you anyway because uh, this, I think this will be a funny little story to stop on. Uh, I actually had an idea. If I ever won like a big old lottery, like one of those three hundred million dollar lotteries, that I there's a Hooters in the town I lived, uh, I, I live in, and I would want to buy the space next to it, build up a restaurant. Uh, that's that's a uh, you know just like Hooters where it's casual dining and all that. Um, now, the difference is all of the people will of course all the all the servers will be males. Uh, they'll all be wearing like um, you know like they'll, they'll, they'll have them wear like kilts or something, but nothing else, no shirts. Uh, and of course, they have to be really buffed and everything. And then the uh, symbol on the sign is going to be a. Uh, a squirrel holding a burlap bag over his shoulder with an acorn sticking out of it. And the name of the restaurant will be The Nutsack. And so that's, that's what I want to do. Um, <laughs> so, yes, that, that would be my ultimate goal. All right, guys. So with that, have a wonderful rest of your evening or morning or... Yeah. It's the Anti-Trekker. We will return to your scheduled programming shortly, or we are currently experiencing technical difficulties. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's the anti-checker. Mm -hmm. It's the anti-checker.
to go on hurting you. I shall leave you as you left me, as you left the commander, marooned for all eternity in the center of a dead YouTube channel, buried in comments, buried in comments. <laughs> 